Oh boy, artists, you're in for some pastel painting fun with this tutorial. I'm gonna teach you my technique, my favorite technique, using these two acrylic ink colors to make your pastel paintings pop with vibrancy and life. And be sure to stay tuned to the end. I'm going to show you an answer to a question I get all the time. Does the underpainting color matter when you're creating an underpainting? And I'm gonna show you, yes, it does. Let's jump right into the fun and I'm sharing with you my surface. It's called pastel board made by ampersand. And yes, it's a board. It's sturdy. I love it. This is 12 by 16 size. It's white. Now, what am I doing here? Well, it's a board. It's heavy. It's kind of hard to attach to your easel. So I use a thick painting stick and you see, I have a clip here that I can use to level it out. And I just tape it on the opposite side with artist tape. And so far so good. I've never had one fall. Now I have a lovely reference image from unsplash.com. I cropped it differently vertically. If you're a patron of mine, you'll get my cropped version along with all of your Patreon goodies. I'm starting with a marker. This is a Tombow grayscale marker. And the reason I'm using a marker is, of course, this pastel board is a water-friendly surface or I wouldn't be able to use the techniques that I'm using. But because I'm using a water-based medium for the underpainting, if I was to use a charcoal pencil here, it would just wash the charcoal pencil right off. It would kind of bleed it all into the surface. So I have found that using markers works great. I will have all product links in the description of this video. And once my sketch is completed, I'm ready to apply my acrylic ink. Now you can see how loosely I'm sketching this. The goal is to keep the life and the movement of these flowers. And again, my patrons will get a copy, a downloadable copy of this sketch if you would like to work from it. And before starting this glorious underpainting, I just quickly wanted to share with you that if you want all of these goodies I'm always talking about on my Patreon page, it's real easy. It's only $5 a month and you unlock so many things. Not only will you receive all of the extended content I'm always talking about, for example, this lesson on my Patreon page, they got it early, it's real time, and there's no commercials. You can also, if you don't like to subscribe to anything, I'm now making it available in my Patreon shop where you can purchase individual lessons very affordably. And there's so much more. I also love the fact that I get to see your work. There is a homework album I've created for my patrons along with other sharing platforms where I get to really enjoy your work. And each month I do a homework album review. I just love that part. There are literally hundreds of lessons on my Patreon page, all very neatly divided in the section called collections. So it just makes finding things so easy. Now, let me share with you one of my favorite underpainting techniques. I'm showing you here something I often like to do, whether I'm starting an underpainting or just a painting. I will desaturate an image, take the color away. This allows me to more clearly see the values, the lights and darks. As you can see, there's a lot of middle value, medium gray. The trees in the distance are a little darker and so is the foreground. So that helps me in creating this underpainting. All you need is some water and uh, I'm actually gonna be using another little container I'll show in a minute. I like to have some paper towels just kind to control the flow of water. And now I wanna show you my favorite two acrylic ink colors made by Daylor Rowney. The first is Indian yellow. It's just this beautiful golden yellow. And years ago, I accidentally discovered how this color combined with fluorescent pink makes a magical golden reddish magenta color that you'll see when I start applying this. And unfortunately, I ran out of this color, so I had to substitute it for this painting. It worked fine. It was a quinacridone magenta, but I just wanted to share those are my favorite colors. Now, you'll need some brushes. I, I don't know why I always love these tattered, torn brushes, but I liked that one. This one I use at the beginning. I can't even remember the name of it, but I say it's similar to a puppy dog's tail, um, but primarily I use this hockey brush, H-A-K-E, and it just uh, controls the flow of things nicely. I'll have all product links again in the description of this video. I love this tray. Now, why is it so stained? Acrylic inks are permanent, and if you don't wash it out really soon, it will stain things, but that's okay because it dries and it's no big deal. So what I'm doing is putting some water in one of my containers, and now I'm going to apply some of my Indian yellow in another one of these containers. You could use separate little dishes, or however you want to do it. And I was almost running low of this color as well. It's because I use these two colors all the time. So I just put in a, a few little drops of this and now I'm going to put in the magenta. 
like I said, I ran out of my fluorescent pink. So this is a quinacridone magenta. It's also made by De La Rowney, but it happens to be a watercolor ink and watercolor inks and acrylic inks mix fine. So it's very similar to the fluorescent pink, my favorite, but uh, I didn't have any on hand. So what I'm doing here is I've got my little puppy dog tail brush. Again, I, I would not use this again. Uh, it was a little bit too floppy. And as I always say, use what you have, but try to use a fairly large brush. It keeps things more impressionistic. So what I'm doing is I'm in a, an empty, uh, one of the little wells of my container. I mixed a little bit of water and a little bit of the Indian yellow. Now what's the lightest thing in the reference image? It's the sky and of course some of those flowers that have a little bit of white on them. So I want to use my lightest values uh, in the sky. And I added a little bit of the magenta color um, to my mixture there to get a little bit more of a, a darker or golden color up high. And now I am speeding this up. I'm using mostly magenta here. I think I have a little bit of Indian yellow with it. You see how I'm just dabbing around and combining things. And uh, I'm getting that dark element, which is gonna be that group of trees that's closest to the viewer. Now I'm creating uh, two different areas of trees that are um, a little further away perspectively. So I have kind of three different levels of banks of trees. And now I'm switching to that hockey brush. Uh, again, it's spelled H-A-K-E. And I am just getting in my distant field that is going to be a little lighter than things in the foreground. So I'm kind of combining a little bit of the magenta, a little bit of the Indian yellow in varying strengths. And my middle ground, the kind of the middle part of the painting is, is the, uh, I would say a middle value, not quite as light of, as the sky. And where I'm using this uh, more saturated uh, magenta color is for some of these flowers. Now notice where I'm working right now, there's no water behind it, it's just dry. So that's why it shows a little bit more detail. And that flower on the lower right is gonna be more of a focal point flower. So where I'm adding colors up high, where I already have some water, things are gonna just meld and bleed a little bit, very much like a wet on wet watercolor painting technique. And that works in my favor because I don't want these flowers in the distance to have so much focal point attention. I want them to feel dreamy and far away. So keep that in mind. So some of your focal point elements, um, do them before you apply a whole lot of water. Now this, I may have lost people already at this point. It's like, this looks like a mess. But I promise these loose and painterly underpainting beginnings is what is going to not only influence the vibrancy, part of this video is talking about how this is gonna cause all the other colors to just pop, but it's also gonna give that impressionistic feel, um, that surreal dreamy quality, if that's what you're looking for. So just a little bit more on the distant trees. And I also now not only have a great complementary color, I'll talk more about that in a minute um, for my underpainting, but I've also got a roadmap. I've got a, a value study. I've got kind of my values in place with this gorgeous color, and I've got a foundation to start the painting. And I know I sped this up so you could see the process, but you can always slow this down in YouTube by hitting the gear icon in the lower right and slow things down. Now I am blowing this dry. I don't want to apply pastels to it wet, and it does dry just a little lighter. Now these are some of the pastel selections I use. Used. Again, if you're a patron of mine, I don't mean to just belabor you guys with that, but uh, my Patreon page does have a lot of extra content. Um, I used um, some beautiful greens of Mount Vision pastels. I love Mount Vision pastels, and my patrons get all of my color notes. I even give you color numbers for many of the pastels I used. Also, I am using, you'll see towards the end, these gorgeous J. Luda pastels. They're from Romania. This is my set that I curated working with J. Luda pastels. It's called pretty in purple. And these purple pastels made the perfect finishing marks to my flowers. I'll have a link to how you can purchase this set in the description of this video and use coupon code SJ10 to receive a discount. 
Time to get started with Soft Pastel. This is a Mount Vision Pastel. It's number 671. I, I don't mention all of the color numbers in this version of this video, but uh, you'll get to see some of them. Now what I'm doing is I'm starting with more of a middle value. I have in the past often started with my darks, but I've really been liking lately laying down most of the middle values first and then approaching adding my dark values. So I knew that the trees, the big group of tree, the background trees, and many of the flowers were kind of a middle ground. So now I'm using this dark color, I believe this is a Sennelier pastel, to um, just establish some areas that are darker. Now the grouping of trees that I just worked on, the ones that are close, it's, it looks kind of like a blob for a while, but bear with me, it will come to life. And I wanted to add this element that's kind of a foreground weed. I did see it in the reference image. Um, they were a little darker so that's why I used that now I've got another kind of middle value this is a green and I'm just using it to kind of soften some of the edges of the trees where the light would be hitting and to scumble in some of this pretty middle value green in some of the grasses now this is 211 I believe another Mount Vision pastel oh and I like to break them they're kind of big Mount Vision pastels are great you get a, a lot of pastel for your buck um, and now I'm just softening the values and and lightening the, uh, the values and colors in the distance and using this for that upper middle ground. Things get lighter in value as they progress into the distance. So I'm using just that general principle um, in my favor. Now here's another Mount Vision. It's a pretty yellowy green. I know that I'm gonna have a concept of a sun in the distance or light at the horizon. And I know my greens are gonna get lighter in value again in the far distant, things keep getting lighter, and I wanted them a little brighter. Now I'm comparing a few greens here. This is a nice, uh, I think that might be, that might be a Terry Ludwig, I can't tell. But now I'm adding the light onto some of these leaves for this uh, foreground weed. And the way we work with pastels is we layer things uh, from dark to light typically. I always say you work from the inside out. Think of the darkest shadowy area of an element. Put that value down first and then turn the lights on by adding your highlights and your lights in um, sections or levels. So you can see now I'm layering gently. A light touch is very important. You don't want to cover up all that dark um, just to layer some light and get that little vein that's in that one little weed or that uh, leaf coming down. And uh, often with round pastels to get uh, stems and grasses, I will roll it. It gives a more fractured line or broken line and it feels more painterly. Um, so I have been showing you a little bit of real time in this and, and this version does, it skips ahead a bit. Again, my Patreon version, again, sorry to beat you guys over the head with this. It's all real time. It's all the content. Um, but now I wanted to show you, this is a packing peanut because at this point you probably say, okay, I want the, I know you want the underpainting peeking through, but this is a little crazy. There's a lot of pink and orangey colors peeking through. So this packing peanut, literally what you get in packages to protect them. I got a whole bunch of them free in a package and uh, I just use it to blend and I have so many of them that I switch when one of them gets a little dirty and I'm just lightly blending. I'm not trying to cover up all of that <clears throat> pretty golden magenta color I've created. I'm just trying to um, kind of uh, soften things and lose some of the, um, the chunkiness of the background. Now this is a beautiful blue color, Mount Vision 220. And see what a nice soft moody background I have now. Um, but I'm using this to cool off those distant trees. So here's another art principle. Not only do things get lighter in the distance, they get cooler often in color temperature. So it's amazing how just a little bit of a cooler uh, layering of a color will make something feel further away. Don't those trees feel further away? Um, I just used my finger to do a little blending there. Now, I'm not gonna leave the sky yellow, although in some paintings I do, when it's a real sunset, you know, whatever the mood is. But this is more of a daytime scene. So I'm using some beautiful turquoise colors in the sky, and I'm also combining a little bit of a, uh, I'm just doing some carving. Remember how I said those trees wouldn't stay like a blob? I just carve into them to bring them to life. But this is a little periwinkle kind of lavender color I used in the sky, and a little bit of light. There were a few clouds in there. Now this is a gorgeous Terry Ludwig. It is a purple blue. And again, back with my principle of layering dark to light, I am going to 
gradually add the light. Now you can see I've got a, um, well, I'm back to the dark again now, but I add the light on the sides that's catching the light. And in this case, the sunlight is coming from the upper right. So you'll notice the flowers have more highlights. You can see here on the upper right. Now here I zoomed in so you can see, do you see this underpainting glowing through? I'm sorry, it sounds so excited about this. To me, this is what makes this painting pop. Now, like I said, stay tuned to the end. I'm going to show you what this painting would look like if I had a different color underneath. Uh, I think you'll be amazed. Now, here's where I'm adding these beautiful purples from the Pretty in Purple set. I did want some of these flowers, just like in the reference image, to be a little more pink. Um, some of them lean a little more white. So I put a purple down first, and now I'm adding this beautiful, gorgeous pink uh, J. Luda Pastel. The same principle. Notice how they're going from dark to lighter, and same as the uh, blue flowers. They're just gradually getting lighter where the sunlight is hitting, but you still have that influence of that deeper color underneath. Now I'm using some dark colors um, to make some little weeds, to add in a few more of my wildflowers in the distance. And this is where it starts to get fun. I have got my foundation in, I've got the majority of things blocked in, but I also want to turn on the lights on some of these flowers. So I've got an even lighter J. Luda pastel to really brighten up a few of these wildflowers and add a few more just suggestions. Here's where I'm developing that one focal point weed um, that I said was just it was interesting. It was just a neat um, element uh, for focal interest. And here's where I'm just sprinkling and carving in some of the um, greens and the grasses. And this is a Prismacolor new pastel. They're harder pastels. They're long sticks. They're pretty affordable. I've had the same set for years and they make nice grasses. All right, here's where I'm going to show you how the underpainting color can make a difference. I have this in Photoshop. I've isolated the color that's the underpainting. You see that bar up there that says hue? I'm going to slide this to the left. It's going to basically warm up those undertones you're seeing, and it's making it even warmer. It's turning it kind of pink. You see how the pink colors underneath even work? Warmer colors work great with landscape paintings because there's a lot of greens and blues, and they act as a complementary color. Complementary colors are just colors that are opposite on the color wheel. And I often will do an underpainting that's a vibrant pink like this. You see, this looks really pretty too. But I'm going to start moving it back in just a second and cooling off the underpainting colors. They're going to get a bit more uh, yellowy and green. I get that question all the time. Can you use green as an underpainting? Well, in a landscape painting, it's a little blah. I think you'll see why. All right, I'm moving it back now. Now we're back almost to the original colors, that pretty golden color. All of these warm colors worked really well. Now, can you see it's getting a little yellow underneath? A eh, little yuck, because I have some yellow greens in the distance. And now I'm going to move it more to the right where it's going to turn it even more green underneath. All right, so this is a green underpainting with a green landscape, lots of green grasses. Do you see how, and now it's kind of a teal turquoise color. You see, it just doesn't have the impact that that beautiful original golden reddish color had underneath. So I hope this really visually explained how an underpainting color can influence your painting. I'm zooming in here again so you can see just those little hints of that beautiful golden uh, Indian yellow magenta color combined. And I think it's just delightful. So I hope you learned a lot with this lesson. Please like this video. It means so much. It helps YouTube to share it more. And also leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. If you want the full lesson, become a patron of mine. And there's so much more on my Patreon page. I'm always blessed to share these lessons with you. And as always, God bless and happy painting.